space. At the end of that fight, both got after it. On February 27, 2021, Hemi Ahio fought in a rematch against journeyman Julius Long in a scheduled eight-round bout. Back, touch him up. Good luck. Throughout the fight and during the rounds, Long tried to intimidate his opponent by trash-talking him. Frame with... A lot of talk. He does need to be cautious not to pause in range. Many times, Long stopped defending himself, and whenever Ahio connected with his shots, he made funny gestures to taunt him. Punish him, absorb him a lot of shock. Every time he eludes a punch too, not that time though. It's out here bombing away. Sometimes he can get out of the space. Him having a laugh at himself. Like getting sucked into the showmanship. Well, that's starting to become an interesting round because he's landing a lot of shots, he's talking a lot of smack. And he uses his bulk and his size and the gamesmanship right at the end. In round four, Long sent Ahio to the canvas with a right shot, but Ahio quickly recovered and started finding success with his own shots. Julius Long is really landing those clubbing shots from the outside. Ahio is landing shots, but they no longer see. Sticking to his guns, long. Ahio did exactly the right thing. Stepping back. Only for him to step back. The crowd is enjoying this, a genuine slugfest from two big fellas. Nice work from Ahio, starting to land in combination. And the bell could have come for a better time for Julius Lloyd Long. After a rugged fifth round, or fourth round rather, Hemi Ahio coming back very strong. Oh, both these men. Oh, look at that shot. That's one of many. Check hook from Long as he uh, lurches and four punches. Yeah, for a man who's taking a lot of punishment, resilience. Still standing once again. Three shots in quick succession. In round seven, Ahio connected with a left hook that landed flush on the button, setting his giant opponent crashing to the canvas in a heap. And finally, Ahio with a succession of left hooks. He clattered his head against the canvas, and it was all she wrote for Julius Lloyd Long. It was a hearty performance from both fighters. In the end, Hio's, uh, Hio's power took hold. Julius Long epitomizes what it means to be a boxer. What he's shown. Seven, your winner by KO, fighting in the red corner, Hemi the Heat Hio! On February 17th, 2018, Danny Garcia faced Brandon Rios after suffering his first career loss 11 months earlier. During the official weigh-in, Rios yelled at Garcia and claimed that he is going to win no matter what it takes. Garcia. Yeah, hell yeah. I can win that fight. I can win a one-on-one -on -one world title like that. So why can't I beat Danny Garcia? He's nobody special. Everybody thinks he's somebody special. He's nobody special. I'm ready. I'm ready for this guy. What does it do for you mentally as you prepare for this fight? To go through a weigh-in where you actually made weight pretty easy, comfortably, what difference does that make in the ring? Like I tell everybody, when I do it right, when I'm disciplined, and when I'm concentrated and I'm focused, I'm an animal. Nobody was going to stop me. And I, I got this motherfucker. What happened to Bradley? What happened to Bradley? Everybody's thinking of my last opponent, but Bradley, fuck them, they're stupid. But when I'm an animal and I do it right, I'm an animal. And I'll, I'm coming to knock this motherfucker out. Prediction. I'm gonna win this fucking fight. That's my prediction. At the end of the, at the end of the, at the end of the 12 rounds or whatever it takes, I'm winning. Anything thrown on the upper half will be considered okay. 
Anything on the lower half, no. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. <laughs> Premature uh, ringing of the bell. Well, we get things started finally. Round one with Danny Garcia. He is to be in the trenches with him. Other than that, he has been more of a stationary fighter. Garcia known for having one of the best chins in the reels, but he is getting some of them in. This is a pretty close round. And getting better snap on, on the punches too. He's but counter punching here and then the combination of the chance in this fight. It's got to be at oh, oh, right hand. hand by Garcia once yep. again, trying to avoid getting trapped on those ropes. Oh, right hand. The best welterweights in the world, but there. for Garcia, 19 of his 33 wins have come in. Snap, and he's more right, sharp. To clarify then, Al, is this what you expected? Yeah, and is the technically more proficient fighter, let's face it, by a lot. But Rios has toughness. Right hand by Garcia. She came all the way up from lightweight, uh, not so much. Wow. Garcia rocking Rios with the right hand, and Rios just leaning oh. in. And yet Al Garcia using the left hand to get out of uh, the ropes. Exactly, and, and, and coming. Hand over the top. Garcia comes back with the right hand. Again, Garcia backing up to the ropes, and Rios. Garcia, it's an interesting puzzle for the judges, because they have to weigh. Dude, feel it. Picking up the pace here. And then on the break, you know, he'll get the space again. Oh, three punch combination. Those two knockouts after the seventh round was unfortunately. Oh, bad. good right yeah. left combination by Garcia. Garcia has taken control of oh, right hand by Rios. Like him, he's just so much more. Both fighters went toe to toe for eight rounds until Garcia unloaded up being right hand in the ninth round that landed flush in Rios's chin, sending him crumbling to the canvas. Some attrition with him because he's taking. Oh, my. Ending right away. Watch the right hand slinging left. Look at that. His hand was down, and man, did he clip him with that right hand. And that stage, side of your skull to right there, just a clean. That is, you won't see a cleaner knockout shot than that. Rios didn't clear that kill. Danny Swift Garcia. On December 12, 2020, unified heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua defended his title against Kubrat Pulev. Before the fight, Pulev promised to beat Joshua and take away his titles. I respect you, man. Tomorrow I show you, man. Tomorrow I show you. I said, I love you. I love you. I don't try. I do. I don't try. I'm just talking. I don't try. I swear to God. No, no, no try. No try. No try. Yes, no try. Tomorrow I show you. It's no trying. People like you. It's no trying. For many years in boxing, people like you have been talking. Tomorrow I show you. Like you been okay. Tomorrow I show you. Tomorrow I show you. Okay. You know I'm better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys got time. You got time tomorrow. You know I'm better. We'll do it tomorrow, guys. Come on. You know I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Tomorrow will be a good day for me. This is number one, where's number two? Over here. Respect you, my friend. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I respect you, really. But I'm better boxer. Listen to him because he's smart, and experienced, and normal. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, fine. This is not bad. bro. I like you, man. <laughs> I like you. See you tomorrow. Yes, for sure. I'm there to beat you. I will be there to beat you. Great, great. We can we can play this when you want. I'm wrestle. I'm wrestle. Let's go. I'm wrestle. In round two, 
Joshua connected with a combination, but Pulev smiled sarcastically back at him, as if to say that the punches did not affect him. Joshua to land something over the top. A consistent jab. And through two rounds, we haven't seen it. That's two rounds in the books right now. A little uh, extracurricular there. After weaves nicely underneath, so good defensive skills by Joshua. And a return right hand. Good counter right. Pulev is hurt. Second right hand. That clipped him as well. Now he goes in for the kill. Pulev says he's not hurt. Screaming out. But Joshua but Joshua increased the pressure in round three, hurting Pulev with a series of shots and forcing him to take a standing count. Once the fight was allowed to continue, Joshua put Pulev to the canvas with an uppercut late in the round. Turns away. Does he want any more of the uppercut? Pulev down on his back. Second knockdown of the round. Pulev recovered from the knockdown and continued taunting the champion. Home. He is hitting him every time. And the round ends. And whoa, and that's well after the bell and unnecessary. Really special. When you go in hard jab and a right hand by Joshua. That's a snap that the scorecards. But I want to see the action he gave us in the third round. Fast There's downstairs looking for that big right hand and that uppercut. Three in a row there right it there. Is. Four. There it is. Joshua had his, has his head up in the air, a little high. But maybe, maybe not. But it's a good scorecard. Look at these uppercuts. Two of them landed. Three. In round nine. Joshua sent Pulev to the canvas again with another uppercut before stopping him moments later with a brutal right hand. Right hand, and down goes Pulev, and that's it. And there is your ferocious finish. The count is on. And they get to take a win that he can be proud of and take his confidence now. And good sportsmanship by both men at the end of that fight. Both got after it. And Joshua, AJ, Anthony, Joshua. On December 8, 2007, Floyd Mayweather defended his WPC and the ring welterweight titles against Ricky Hatton. It was a battle between two undefeated fighters. Floyd's been aggressive towards me all week. As you can see, he's been aggressive tonight, you know, and he's like that. And uh, I think he's trying to get up my under my skin this week and worry me and look in my eyes and see a little bit of fear. I only have I only have one one message. You're pissing into the wind zone. I ain't scared of you. Hatton came out firing from the opening round, and his constant pressure initially made Mayweather appear uncomfortable. He Hatton has a tendency all the time to faint left, and when he does that, he drops his right hand and he's open for the left hook constantly. And Floyd has a way of giving you that shoulder. Now he works downstairs, leans forward. For Ricky Hatton, when you come inside, that's one part of it. Floyd almost went down, but part of that is because he was backing up when he got hit. Walks in on right hand, does Hatton. Big right hand, and Hatton right back with the right of his own. Which is not Floyd's plan, but Floyd really catches you with clean shots. Now Floyd hangs on when he gets nailed with an awkward punch that time. Even if he loses a point or two. In the sixth round, Hatton had a point deducted after he punched Mayweather in the back of the head. Rocked him with a pretty good right hand. He did a really good head. And whether he's hurt or he's just off balance is a question. He got a big smile on his face, so it appears that he was off balance. It looks like he's taking a point away. Joe Cortez takes a point away because he hit him in the back of the head. The point deduction infuriated Hatton, who decided to turn his back on Mayweather once the action was allowed to continue. In round 10, Mayweather knocked Hatton down with a left hook. Left hook drops him. And then he hit his head off the turnbuckle, and he's very, very wobble. A left hook Six. came like a bolt Seven. out of the blue. Hatton got back to his feet, but Mayweather, sensing that the end is near, went for the kill and unleashed a flurry of punches, prompting the referee to step in and stop the bout. The fight is over. Floyd Mayweather has stopped Ricky Hatton in the 10th round. 
to retain the WBC and Ring Magazine Welterweight Championship of the World. And he's made a statement in boxing. As I was starting to say long about the fourth and fifth, this is one of the greatest fighters that I can recall. And tonight, my 845th world title fight, David. You know, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot more. This guy ranks the best of the very best. A terrific left hook. And, and just terrific opportunism. All fight long by Mayweather. And he slowly pulled away over the last three rounds. The winner by technical knockout at 135 of round number 10 and still undefeated, the WBC welterweight champion, Roy Money. Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to never miss another interesting update from this channel.